Welcome, everyone. You are listening to the Ohio Writers Guild, and tonight I am chatting with Christy Larrabee. And Christy, I just, we were just chatting. I met Christy at a conference, uh, the Igniting Souls Conference back in October. We sat at the same table, table number eight, and, uh, <laughs> and we chatted, and I said, oh my gosh, I have to have you on the podcast. So Christy is here tonight, so I can't wait to talk to Christy and find out more about her book and all about writing. I mean, this group is all writers. We have some newbies. We have some that are published. Um, we have some that's been around a long time and have a lot of books published, but we have an awful lot of new folks on, on this particular podcast and members of the Ohio Writers Guild, and they're wanting to publish and they just, you know, haven't had time. You know how it is. One day I'd like to write a book <laughs> or else all of their family keeps saying, you should write a book. And they're like, yeah, maybe I will someday. And they just don't know how to get started. So we're going to kind of get into all of that with Christy. So first of all, Christy, tell us about your journey. My journey to being a writer. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yes. yeah. yes. Well, it all, it's all kind of connected to, to the book I ended up writing. So I was not, I've always been a reader, but not so much a writer until I was a, an adult. And okay. so the book, uh, we, we had trouble having children. And so we ended up losing six over the period of seven years. We lost six pregnancies before my son was finally born. And oh, um, so that I'm so sorry journey, about that, but congratulations you. with your son, our little miracle man. Um, so during that whole time, I ended up getting into writing in a really weird way. I started writing fan fiction for this TV show I used to watch. Okay, okay. And I was like, oh, I actually like writing. And so then I kind of transitioned into not so much doing the fan fiction thing anymore, but God kind of laid it on my heart to, I learned a lot of lessons over those seven years that can be applicable in situations that aren't just losing pregnancies. There was a lot of, you know, the book is called miscarriage of a dream because, you know, my dream was to be a mother, but there are many dreams and plans that we have that don't end up going the way that we hope they will. And so you grieve the losses of those dreams. And this book can really help just process all those feelings. Cause you do, you know, you grieve the loss of the plans and dreams you thought you would have, you know, not necessarily just a baby. So, wow. So tell us about, about your book. Just give yep. us some, yeah, because I know you're passionate about helping people. You, you want them to find freedom in living out God's true plan for their lives. And so does your, is your book kind of around that as well? It is. Yes. And so it's, it's three parts. So the first part we talk about kind of the angst that comes from dreams and plans, not going the way you wanted to and trying to get into like a really more controlling sense of like, oh my gosh, my life is out of control. Now I feel like I need to kind of uber control. <laughs> and so we go through a lot and that creates a lot of angst and, um, you know, anxiety and just bad feelings because you want to make it happen so bad, but it's not happening. Um, and then once you kind of become aware of how you're kind of maybe compensating in a bad way for those feelings of grief that you kind of have from the miscarried dream, so to speak, we come into awareness, which is the second part of the book where we kind of go through the three, the three steps of how you can kind of process all those feelings and go through the, the grieving process and let go and come into the third part where we learn how to kind of trust more in God's plan and give over that control and stop trying to kind of micromanage everything and realize that, uh, and then that third part of the book is acceptance, where we kind of accept that the dreams and plans either may never happen, they may never happen just the way we think they will happen. So it might happen in a sort of different way, but God's plans are always better than our plans. Um, and so you can take your d big disappointment in life and insert it into that whole thing. It doesn't have to be necessarily losing a baby. Wow. So when did you actually start thinking that you wanted to write this particular type book that had those three parts? Was it, 
while you're in the processing of going through the miscarriages or was it after your son was born that you realized you needed to to do this book and and I say needed because I talked to so many authors and they're kind of like you know what um this book just kind of came through me I didn't Mm -hmm. I didn't like make it up it just I knew this was a message I had to get on paper so yeah when did when did you decide that that you uh you know, that you needed to write this story. Yeah. So in between, uh, after I lost the sixth pregnancy, I, God sort of laid it on my heart that I needed to share the journey, uh, with other people who were going through the same thing, uh, or who were going through other disappointments, you know, related to other issues, but that the same lessons would apply, you know, in their situation. And so initially, and I didn't want to write it because it was kind of like dredging everything back up again, you know, um, that is it's, tough, isn't it? Because you kind of have to, to to actually put put the emotion into the story. You kind of have to go back and relive all of those do. feelings. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So painful. I, yeah, I kind of fought with myself over it because initially I wanted to write it in the third person, more like kind of a novelish thing, you know, where like. But then I realized I wouldn't be able to get across the whole like depth of emotion, and so I couldn't avoid <laughs> reliving it, and so I ended up, you know. So I initially wrote it um, under a different title, which was called Acceptance. And um, then that was more like just our story of infertility and not really applying it, you know, as much as Miscarriage of a Dream does. And so I wrote that when I was pregnant. And then, I mean, it took a long time because like I'd write some of it and then I'd be like, okay, I need a break because this is just really too much for me. And so it was a slow process. I finally finished it when my son was just about almost two and, um, published it. And then these days you have to market your own books. And so I'm very not good at that. And so I'd rather just write them and then just sort of put them out into the universe and then just start writing something else. Well, I get it. I get it. And I tell authors all the time that your, your readers will find you. Right. Yeah. They they will find you. Yeah. So then I realized a few years later, actually, I found Carrie Oberbrunner on a Facebook ad. Yeah. And so I watched his webinar and I was like, I need to reformulate this book uh, because these, these lessons are for more than just people who've lost babies. And so I didn't know what to do though. And so, so we're going through Author Academy Elite actually is what helped me kind of, because um, I don't normally write with an outline. Uh, but it sort of forced me to kind of make an outline and okay. make those parts and kind of do like a chapter by chapter synopsis of kind of where I wanted to go with it. And that kind of helped kind of get it into like a concise flow um, way better than I thought it would. So that's when I realized, or when I watched his webinar, I had been feeling kind of like I wanted to do that anyway. And so it was kind of almost a God thing that I saw the webinar. And, and so then I that's when I kind of got into rewriting it and republishing. Okay, so so you had already published, and then once you met Carrie, you you republished. Yeah, the publishing company I went through for acceptance went out of business, and so then it, it was out of print. Okay. And so um. So it was rather easy to just republish it at that yes, point. Yes. Yes. Okay, with the new title, kind of the new format, new cover art. No, well, it was. I took. I took. I mean, the crux of our story is the same. But I mean, the, the new book can, it has like discussion questions at the end of the chapter. It can really be used for like a small group study or like Bible study kind of thing. So it's, you can go through it alone. You could go through it with a small group of people. Like it's, um, way more user-friendly maybe, uh, way more, um, kind of broader, broader audience than the first one, which was really dedicated toward moms and you know, husbands and wives that had lost babies. So how long did it actually take you to, to write the book from, from when you started to when you got published to try to inspire and encourage all of those listeners that ha- have written part way and they're kind of stuck? How long did it take you to actually get published? Oh, good heavens. Well, once, once I... S- once I signed up for Author Academy Elite, it was like an 18 month thing. And I had to get okay. a couple of extensions. <laughs> okay. Okay. So okay. It was really over two years from like when I, and I wasn't writing that whole time, but you I know how it. it is. 
you write and then you go through seasons where you're not so much writing and then you be like got to get back in gear and I get it yeah it, it took longer than I had planned but okay okay that's okay <laughs> But you finally, it's out there. It's you got out it out there. Yep. Yep. Now, so if you had to pick a target audience today, who would your target audience be? Probably Christian women who have, you know, I've talked to so many women over the years that, you know, they've got a child that's in addiction and they've gotten their hopes up and oh. dashed and up and dashed so many times. And like, that is a situation that could really benefit um, you know, I mean, there's so many, but yeah, probably Christian women, men too, but it, I mean, it's not like specifically dedicated toward women, but I imagine that a woman would probably be more likely to read it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, have you put any courses together or anything around the book? I hope to, that is definitely on my to-do list. I would like to do a course along with it and do some coaching, you know, okay. Um, that okay. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's... that was, that was going to be my, my next question. If you, if you had to pick you know, the main message by the time they got to the end of the book, what would their main message that you wanted them to receive? What would that be? There is freedom in surrendering your plans to the Lord. Okay. <laughs> that letting go of trying to control it, just realizing that the freedom lies in letting him be in control of it. Uh, that's that's an awesome message, <laughs> you know, and I can very clearly see where uh, a Christian readership would get that. They would understand that. Um, yeah, that's a, that's an awesome message. So now, how did you know when you were, and, and we're going to back up and go back to the very beginning. How did you know when you were ready? Because even though you felt like, oh, I should write this book and all this, I've got a message that I want to get out there uh, to other folks that are maybe going through the same thing I'm going through. And then, of course, here you ended up republishing it for a broader audience. Um, but how did you know when you were actually ready to start writing? Because so many folks are kind of like, I don't even know where to start. So how did you know you were ready? Um. I don't think I was ready. I think I just had to do it anyway. <laughs> I get it. Well, like I said, I fought with myself over with over it for a long time. You know, from when I felt like I needed to do it to when I actually started was probably over a year. Oh, wow. Where I kind of mentally kind of, I mean, I was thinking about it, but I hadn't put pen to paper necessarily, you know. I was trying to map out how can I tell this without like re-breaking my heart in a million pieces, <laughs> like trying to live, having to relive it, you know? And so I finally realized my dad is, is my, I, he's my best friend and my mentor. And so I was kind of talking through it with him because I talked through everything with him and he was like, you know, you're, you're just going to have to write it in the first person. Like you can't get away from, you have to people aren't going to feel the feelings and the emotion of it if you don't tell it from the first person. And so when I finally came to the point where I realized I did have to do that, then I start, then I was able to start writing. Uh, but it took over a year. I was, so I lost that pregnancy. And then a year, almost exactly a year later, I got pregnant again. And that was with my son that he made. It. Okay. Um, but like I said, I was writing, I started writing not long after I was pregnant with him. So it, it was, it was a while. So I was never ready. I, that's just the, the I, that may be a bad answer, but I had to push through the not being ready and just do it anyway, <laughs> because I so, kind of, it was a burden to do it, you know? Yeah. Because you had to, again, you had to kind of relive some mm -hmm. of those emotions in order to get those out on paper. And so as you're reliving those, any, any tips and tricks for, for the folks listening, the would-be authors that are maybe doing the same thing they're hesitating because they really don't want to relive maybe a traumatic experience but that's they know they need to write that story yes um, how do you get through that you just have to realize that it's gonna it's gonna be hard it's gonna hurt and and don't try to gloss over it like i kind of got caught in the trap of trying to trying to skim over it with words, you know, and not like go deep into the emotion. And you're going to get the best, um, like response from your audience and they're going to get the, the best, um, like lesson and information from what you're sharing. 
if you just let it all out you have to you have to go all the way to the bottom of the feeling and and even though it's gonna hurt you have to do it and then take a break like if it's too much you can it's okay to step back and just like sort of because i do feel like god did a lot of healing in me while i was writing it and so you know you you put some of the things out there and then you have then you take a break and then you sort of process it and and heal through it you know and and so it's okay to take it slow okay Okay. So again, it's explain some of your writing process. So you would write some and then you would take a break and kind of how long of a break in between these, um, <laughs> these writing sprints would you do? You know, I'm like the, probably the least disciplined writer in the history of the universe. I don't know. I talk to a lot of writers. I, oh my I, gosh. I, I probably I, can share a lot of stories. I have uh, you know, favorite authors that share their writing process and they get up every day and they write from, you know, certain times. And I'm so undisciplined. I don't have any of that. I basically, I just wrote when I felt inspired and then I, you know, stopped when I didn't. And I'd like to get more disciplined because I do know that, you know, you're not always going to quote, be inspired. Sometimes you have to kind of slog through a time where you're feeling a little bit blocked, but uh, and I did more of that with the second book where I, I tried to write, you know, a little bit each day I didn't have to work. And so I kind of committed to, you know, getting a chapter a week done during that season. And so uh, I tried to be a little more disciplined, but it's a seasonal thing. I get <laughs> Sometimes it. I'm better I get than it. others. <laughs> Do you have a, a special place in your house or is, you know, do you have like a little writing nook or is there a place that, that you go that everybody in the household knows, okay, she's writing, leave her alone right now. Yeah, do I do have to be alone. Like I can't usually do it around other people. Um, I'm really old fashioned and I like writing in a notebook before okay. I don't like write straight to a computer because I don't feel like, um, like I like to, if I write something and then I don't like it, I just cross it off. And, you know, as, whereas like, if I delete it on the computer, I don't, it's, it was it's not there anymore. And so then sometimes if I cross something out, I was like, oh, but actually I liked that better. And so then it's still actually there. I feel more connected to the material when I'm writing it down on paper for some reason. So okay. I usually will curl up on the couch with my dogs and, and write and snuggle and, uh, Okay. That's now, usually where I write. I'm so guilty of trying to edit as I'm writing. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll write something and then I'll go, oh, is that the correct word? Let me look that up. And next thing you know, I'm over here doing an editing piece to it mm -hmm. instead of just writing. Do you struggle with that? A little bit. Um, I, try, I, I try not to do that as much anymore um, because when I go ahead and type it up, from my notebook onto the computer, I try to use that as more of an opportunity to edit um, than, than the actual writing down on the paper. So, okay. Like I also enjoy writing fiction. And so like more with that than the nonfiction, I have arrows and little <laughs> stars over here. And I mean, you wouldn't even know sometimes looking at my notebook paper, like the flow of everything. Cause I was like, nope, cross that off and over here. And it's, <laughs> a little bit chaotic. <laughs> hey, you know what? Whatever gets the job done. I get right? it. I get it. I get it. And so you're hoping to get into some um, more of a routine in your writing. And in a perfect world, what do you hope to accomplish? You want to do some uh, some other books you wanted. I know you mentioned you wanted to do a course for this particular mm -hmm. book. Have mm -hmm. you ever considered doing, um, you know, some like a, a uh, any type of a mastermind where a group of folks would get together for like five weeks. Um, yes. did, have you done anything like that? I definitely want to do that. Yep. I, I want to do, uh, uh, you know, like a small little mini course like that. Um, okay. also I really would love to get into some coaching. Um, I have, I have a real job. And so I also sometimes feel like that and having a 12 year old and three dogs has kind of hijacked my life. And so I have, dreams okay <laughs> yes, okay I would, I would like to I would love to do a course for this book and also like I said I I love writing fiction so I do have a passion for hopefully getting into some more of that um, okay that end of things but I really have a passion for helping people get past the griefs of their kind of mislaid plans and dreams and 
finding freedom. So that that's a big, big passion. Well, I can't wait to get a copy of your book now that I have talked with you, because when I read the title, I too had the misconception that it was all about moms. And so now I can't wait to, to pick up a copy and read it. So this is great, Christy. Uh, how can our listeners actually buy your book and how can they connect with you? Yes, well, it's on Amazon. That's probably the easiest place to get it, um, but it's available anywhere. Um, because I think Ingram Smarks, even if it's not in the store, like they can, or like at Barnes and Noble, they can order it for you or whatever. So, um, yep. And I'm on Facebook and I have my website, uh, christylarabee.com. Perfect. Perfect. Oh gosh, Christy, thank you so much for coming on tonight. This has been great. I, I loved hearing your story and I loved hearing your backstory and I, I know Carrie personally. So um, there's a soft spot in my heart for Carrie. Yeah. And so I really appreciate you sharing your process with us and how you um, were motivated to write this book and how you pushed through all those times. Uh, your story is very important. Your message is important. And um, I'm really glad that you joined us today to tell us about it. So connect with Christy at uh, christylarabee.com. Um, you can go to Amazon and get a copy of her book. And tell us the title again. Your book is called Miscarriage of a Dream miscarriage of a dream so go to amazon and pick up a copy and connect with christy um, if anyone wants to hear the replays for the ohio writers guild those are located at kathybinner.com scroll down my homepage until you come to the ohio writers guild free meetups and click through and get all of the replays all of the contact information will be there as well and i'll put a link there that you can get christy's book and a link that you can connect directly with christy so so thank you for joining us this evening and Christy thank you so much and thank you for having me really appreciate yes. it yes and we will talk with everyone later so hang in there um, I'm going to pause the recording and we will see everyone next month <laughs>